Hey guys, been a minute since I picked up the camera. Feels weird to be filming myself again, but hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and hope the New Year is treating you well. But today it is back to work on the RM250. Now what we got going on today is we are gonna be shining up some of the engine parts, mostly the engine cases back here and some of the engine covers. Now I've already gone through and cleaned up the engine cases in the parts washer, got all the grime and dirt off of them. They came out pretty good but they're still pretty dull, scratched, and pitted from 20 years of use. So we're gonna be restoring that shine to something even better than new. Now, before I get shining on the crankcases, I wanna pop out the bearings. I'll be replacing these anyways, always a good idea. But how I'm gonna do this is by dropping the crankcases, and I believe there's a bearing on this cover too. Yep, drop them in the oven over here at 350 degrees, heat them up for about a half hour, and how this is gonna work is the aluminum, which the cases are made of, expands at a faster rate than the steel. That is the material of the bearings. And those bearings should just drop right out. So this method is a lot less damaging and a lot less stressful in the crankcases compared to just hammering them out. Now, before I get started, I'm gonna pull out the stopper plates that hold the bearings in place. Looks like I got a few on this case too. Now while the oven's heating up, I'm just gonna shave off these gaskets so that way they don't get baked on the oven. Now if you guys are looking for a good gasket scraper and impact screwdriver, I will link both of these down below. These are probably the most common tools I use when working on an engine. Before you pop out those bearings, you wanna make note of which way the bearings are facing. You can see this one has a seal on this side. Other side does not. Same with this one here. On the other crankcase, one thing to make note of is this bearing has a lip on it. You can see right around the edge of it. So that way it's held in with those stopper plates. We've got some aluminum foil laid down inside the oven here to catch those bearings as they start to drop out. All right, let's give her 30 minutes, see what happens. I just heard a loud clunk in the oven. I think these bearings are starting to fall out. Oh yeah, counter shaft one popped out already. Let's see how this right case is looking. Oh, two bearings sitting there. Should be able to just pop those ones out with a little tap. That is freaking sweet. Got one more bearing right here. Ooh, this is hot. Sometimes if you just pick it up and drop it, bearing will come out. Yeah, we're gonna have to use a puller on that one. Ooh, that was easy. Just like butter. One thing I just noticed, when you heat up the crankcase, these collars back here loosen up, so make sure not to lose those. And if you need to replace those for any reason, you can pop them out pretty easily just by uh, heating up the crankcase, it looks like. Wow. Yeah, that method works pretty dang good. I've only done it a couple times, but man, That'll save you from a lot of hassle and potential damage to your cases. The bearings for the clutch arm, which are usually way down inside that hole, I've already got them out, but I was able to pull those out with the blind bearing puller. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up one of these pullers, they're super handy for crankcases, wheel bearings, linkage bearings, anything like that. Super handy to have, but I will link it down below. Apparently, this engine had something just flopping around in it at one point. You can see the damage here on the crankcases and on the inner clutch cover. See all those scrapes and scratches there. I don't want any of those bits coming loose. So I'm gonna smooth all that out with the die grinder. I've got a little flap wheel here. Also, one thing I forgot about here on this crankcase, there's a big chip right here. Also from, uh, I don't even know what it was. Something broke loose in the engine. I'm gonna smooth that out as well. Now at this point, the cases are completely bare, but you can see they're still pretty dull. Got some dirt staining, corrosion, just crustiness on them. Now there's a few different ways to restore the shine. 
The first being is vapor blasting. That uh, requires some expensive machinery. You could also use some sort of chemical cleaning, like a etching cleaner. I'll show you guys what we can do with that. And the third option is to use some sort of physical polishing or buffing. So like uh, cleaning wheels, wire brush, um, scotch bright, steel wool, that kind of thing. That is the approach I'll be going with these. Now the reason I'm going that route is because it's cheap. I can do it here and I love the final result of it. It is definitely my favorite. You end up with something looking like this, which is absolutely epic. But before we do that, let me show you what an aluminum etching cleaner will do with these. Now I've been using the Eagle One Magwell cleaner for a while, but I think they've started to discontinue it. And I was looking for it at Napa the other day and I ended up finding this stuff, the uh, aluminum brightener. It has many of the same ingredients that the Magwell cleaner has. So let's see if this stuff is a good alternative to the Magwell cleaner. So I'm gonna give this stuff a shot inside of here. Try to loosen up some of that dirt staining. So you simply spray it on and let it soak for about 30 seconds. You can see it's starting to turn white there. That means it is starting to uh, kind of etch the aluminum. Now you definitely don't want to use this stuff on anything polished or anything that has any type of coating like paint or anodizing. It'll actually eat anodizing off. I like to brush it around just so it works a little better. So I got most of that dirt staining off of there. Still a little bit left right there. Not exactly sure what that is. Just some crap in the aluminum, but it doesn't necessarily brighten the aluminum up. It's more of just cleaning the uh, dirt staining off like you would see like down here. So I'm actually gonna hit the entire crankcase with the aluminum cleaner and then move on to giving it an actual shine. Well, the Napa aluminum brightener was a success. You can see it got rid of majority of that dirt staining and corrosion. Still a little bit of uh, staining left over, but it leaves it pretty dull. You can see in comparison to the other crankcase. Now, one thing I should mention about the aluminum brightener, you definitely want to wear gloves. That's a given. And if you're going to be using quite a bit of it, I would wear a respirator and goggles or glasses as well. So. Let's get to shining this baby up. First thing we're gonna have to do is start smoothing out or blending in some of these scrapes and scratches. On the bottom side, you can see there's definitely some uh, good sized nicks here. So these scrapes we'll need to smooth out before we give the crankcase a nice shine. I'll be attacking the crankcase with a few different abrasive products. Now these are considered flap wheels. This medium sized wheel and the larger wheel are pretty sweet and the fact they have like this fiber or scotch bright material in between the flaps of sandpaper. Works really well for smoothing out the metal and ensures you don't have like waviness or dips when you're all finished up. And then the smaller wheel is just straight sandpaper. Super tiny, really nice to have for those tight areas. Now this bigger wheel goes on a bench grinder. This one is for a die grinder. I know this wheel is super worn out and you replace it. And then this one goes on a Dremel. Now you don't absolutely need the bigger wheel. That is gonna just rip really fast and save you a lot of time, but you could get away with just those two. All three of these are 80 grit. However, you can get them in higher grit, but typically 80 grit works best for blending in scratches and pits. So let's get to work and see what these things will do. Got this thing looking sweet and all smoothed out. No scratches or pits left over. It's insane how smooth this finish is compared to the original cast finish. Now the trick with these flap wheels is to use light pressure. You gotta let that sandpaper 
and fiber do its job. And you don't want to spend too much time in one specific area, especially with these smaller flap wheels. You'll end up with some waviness or divots if you do that. Now it's on to more cleaning type wheels. Now these are strictly made of fiber. There's no sandpaper in them. So they're going to give more of a brush type look. Now it's going to be tough to get in all those tight areas, especially on this crankcase with just these wheels, but we'll give it a shot. Now where these cleaning wheels really fall short is if you're trying to get in tight areas like inside of there, not that it really matters inside the flywheel area, but if you're trying to get in these spots here, yeah, it's kind of past the limit of those wheels. So what I'm going to do instead is send this crankcase out to my buddy Josh who does vapor blasting. He's going to go ahead, blast it, get the whole thing shiny. So essentially what I'll have is a completely clean and shiny crankcase but I will maintain the brush finish that I have here. So best of both worlds. Now I promise you guys, I will be getting a vapor blaster soon. I'd love to show you guys the capabilities of them. They're pretty sweet. I just need to make some room in the shop for one. But as you guys can tell, I love trying to do everything I can here at home. Now, if we have something like this, where there's not as many tight areas, we could use the uh, flap wheels and cleaning wheels to get this thing completely shined up and give it a brush finish. After a couple minutes of sanding, got the crankcase all smoothed out, no scratches or pits left over. I mostly used the smaller flap wheel. For some of the bigger scratches, I used the bigger flap wheel. I had a big scratch right there, smooth it out in a matter of seconds. So I am going to give it the finishing touch with these cleaning wheels here. Now I found this fine point attachment for the Dremel that should allow us to get in these tighter areas a little better and clean that up a bit more. Seemed to work pretty well in those tight areas. Definitely works better than the cleaning wheel for the really tight stuff. Man, this thing is looking better and better every minute we work on it. Got that nice brushed finish we were going for. Now, if you really want to finish it off really consistent, I will grab a piece of Scotch-Brite, make sure it has like a sharp edge on it that we can get in the tighter areas, and just go through, spend a minute or two, and just kind of rebrush in the same direction over the whole thing. So, in review, we used the small flap wheels to smooth out the scrapes, scratches, and pits. You don't want those showing through when you bring out this brushed finish. And then we used the cleaning wheels, this one here, along with a smaller one to uh, really give it a consistent shine, give it that true brushed finish. And I would say it worked pretty dang good. As far as how many of these wheels you'll need, you could do probably five or six crankcases with a set of these. They last pretty long. Sandpaper holds up very well. Now the cleaning wheels honestly don't last very long at all. I was able to get this crankcase done with one of each. So as you can see, they do wear down pretty quick, but they are essential in getting that really cool finish. Now, if you guys are only concerned with getting a clean finish and not removing scrapes and scratches, you only wanna bring back the shine, 
these cleaning wheels do a great job. I'll show you what it can do on this clutch cover. So you can see in like five to 10 seconds of sanding, you get a pretty dang sweet finish there. Now, like I was saying earlier, these cleaning wheels don't really last too long. So to preserve them and make them last as long as possible, you wanna stay away from sharp edges, like right here, that'll tear them up pretty quick. You also wanna use them at a lower speed, that'll help prolong the life of them. And if you're doing any heavy removal of like corrosion or trying to sand out a scratch, definitely use something more aggressive like a flap wheel. Now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering if you do this type of finish, how do you keep up on the shine and prevent it from getting corroded and really dirty quickly? The biggest thing is keeping your bike as clean as possible. Don't let dirt sit on there for a long period of time. And you can also periodically clean it up with a Scotch-Brite pad. Just go through, give a little brush, and that'll help maintain it. You could also clear coat it. All right, the crankcase is basically done. Just got to uh, sand some of the gasket surfaces, clean up a few small areas. But for the most part, it is done on the outside. So I would say the entire process took about 45, 50 minutes to go through, brush this thing completely. So a couple more pointers to you guys wanting to do something like this. Make sure when you're brushing or sanding, you always go in the same direction. So you wanna work the long way and not across like the short way. That'll give you just that nice consistent shine. And also with some of the smaller flap wheels like these, you don't wanna to spend too much time in one area or else you kinda of create a divot. You wanna be really broad with your strokes. Now obviously there's a limit on how much you wanna sand into the cases. If you have a deep scratch that goes halfway through the thickness, you obviously don't wanna sand that out. You can see it gets pretty thin in some areas. But for your average scratching and pitting on the bottom side, that you can sand out just fine. Now, if you guys wanna take on a project like this, I will have all the links to the wheels, the tools, including the die grinder, the Dremel, all down below in the description. Realistically, you can get away with about $35 to $40 worth of product to clean up both cases. That doesn't include the bigger wheel, that's a little more expensive nor does include the tools, although these aren't too spendy. The Dremel is around 60 and the die grinder is 50. All right, it's a couple days later and look what we have here. This case turned out gorgeous. Josh did an incredible job blasting it. Every little nook and cranny inside and out is clean, just completely spotless. And I don't really think the video does it justice either. This thing is perfectly smooth and shiny. Just seeing this thing really makes me wanna get a wet blaster now. You can see the difference on the inside. Not that it really matters that much compared to the other case. This one is dull and still kind of uh, stained up inside. Whereas this one is perfectly clean. It's always nice to start with a completely clean slate. Thought it'd be a good time to compare and contrast blasted versus brushed. See there's a little bit of difference there. The blasted is definitely, I would say it's more consistent. The brushed has more shine to it. I guess it all depends on your personal preference. I know some people prefer the blasted look, others prefer the brush look, and some people like just the plain old dull etched aluminum look. Now personally, I'm a sucker for the brush look. Looks more trick, more like a factory part. The Vapor blasted look is more like the OEM style, but one thing you can't ignore about vapor blasting is how much better it works at getting in all those nooks and crannies, gets everything perfectly clean and consistent, and that's something a little bit harder to do when you're brushing. So now you guys have a pretty good idea of what the three different styles look like. Make your own decision based off of that. I showed you how to brush the aluminum, showed you how to etch it, although that one doesn't look very good. And now you know what vapor blasting looks like. So if you want your parts vapor blasted, whether that's a crankcase, clutch cover, swing arm, frame, anything aluminum, Josh is the guy to go to. He did an incredible job, turned it around really quick, and just absolutely killed it on this one. So I will put his Instagram down below. Even if you guys just wanna look at shiny parts all day, definitely go hit him up, go give him a follow. He's cranking out parts that look just like this day in and day out. All right, so now I've got a dilemma here. Got the cylinder back from repair. 
as you guys remember it had some detonation damage up here they went through and fixed all that that was a uh, power seal welded it up uh, replated it looks absolutely freaking incredible brand new basically but now I want the cylinder to look just like the cases I want everything to match so I'm kind of thinking this part would be pretty tough to brush I honestly would rather just have it vapor blasted and call it a day so I'm gonna send this thing out to Josh he's gonna blast it should have sent it the first time around but it is gonna be looking just as good as the crankcase if I were to do it all over again personally what I would do is sand out all the scratches on the cases like I did send them out for vapor blasting and then do a brush finish on top of that it's gonna be much easier to uh, get that nice brush finish when you already have a clean surface to work from. I think uh, vapor blasting is definitely the way to go on cases and cylinders. There's absolutely no denying how well it works. And then if you want a brush finish, you can just go on top of the vapor blasting with a wheel or a brush and give it that look you desire, which is what I'm gonna do now with the left case. I'm gonna give it a brush to match the right case, but I need to send the cylinder out to Josh I cannot wait to get it back and see how freaking shiny it's going to be. Holy nuts, guys. I do not even know what to say. Just look at it. That's probably even better than I expected. But the vapor blasting definitely made all the difference there. Wouldn't have been able to get it that clean without the blasting. So after the blasting, I just went through and hit it with the die grinder, the uh, cleaning wheel on there, and then did a hand buff. And when you're hand buffing it or using the cleaning wheel there, you wanna go in the same direction I go the long way across the crankcase. That is just freaking epic. Man, I'm pumped. And better yet, it matches up perfectly with the right case. It doesn't get any better than that. So as you'll notice, there's a few things I need to touch up here. The gasket surfaces, I need to sand. Um, let's see what else. I need to pop in bearings. Actually, most importantly, I am going to protect these cases from corroding or uh, getting stained. I put so much work into them. I've never really had a problem with it on my 125 or 250. They are perfectly shiny still. But with this set, I wanna try something new and you guys will be seeing that in the next video. And for you guys with a good eye, you might've noticed I got some crusty freaking bolts holding this thing together. So I will be replating all the engine hardware in the next video as well, so stay tuned. Let's take a little break from polishing. I've got something really cool to show you guys that I know a lot of you have been hyped about lately. It is the release of the Prime hoodies. Been working on these for probably like six months now, but here they are. So it's like a dark charcoal color, kind of like a gray with a black 3D embroidered logo. Really cool looking. These things are very comfortable and warm. They fit great. I promise you guys will not be disappointed. I think I nailed it with these ones. Now my goal with these was obviously to have something comfortable and warm, but have a color that doesn't show dirt or grime when you're working in the shop or even going for a trail ride. And then have a material and design that's gonna last a long time and make sure your money is well spent. Now these hoodies are completely custom designed for you guys. I didn't just take someone else's hoodie and slap my logo on it. Months and months of testing went into these. As you can see, this is my own branded hoodie. So if you guys are interested in checking these out, they will be over at primemx.com. I'll also have them linked down below. I've got a few more aluminum pieces here that I'll be cleaning up. Now the clutch cover is actually magnesium. I'm curious how that'll clean up on the buffer with those cleaning wheels. Water pump and actually all these parts I will be doing Cerakote on. But uh, some of these have uh, nicks and scrapes that I want to clean up. Just kind of smooth out before I throw some Cerakote down. And then the flywheel, I'm just going to clean up the corrosion on this. Doesn't necessarily need to be coated with anything. If it's underneath a flywheel cover with a good gasket, it shouldn't have any problem corroding. So I'm going to get to cleaning this stuff up.
So I've got the clutch cover all stripped down to the bare magnesium. I'm surprised this magnesium actually shines up pretty good. So in some of these tighter areas, I used a Dremel with a scotch bright attachment. As you can see, the finish is pretty inconsistent, doesn't look that great, and there's tons of pits and scratches on the bottom side of the cover. So what I'm gonna do is bring this thing back over to the buffer. Before I was using the finer wheel, now I'm gonna go at it with the rougher wheel to smooth some of these out, and then finish it up with the finer wheel to give it that nice, consistent shine. This is just insane, guys. There's absolutely no nicks left over in this cover. It is crazy what those wheels will do. So I'll show you kind of how I was getting a consistent finish here. I was using the side of the wheel a lot. If you use just the face of it, you'll actually kind of warp or make dips in the uh, surface there. So on something with a big surface area like this, you wanna use the side of the wheel as much as you can. Now we're gonna give this cover a sweet finish with the finer wheel. I'm done buffing with the fine pad. Looks pretty sweet, nice and shiny, but it is very inconsistent on the face as you can see. So I'm gonna finish it off with the fine pad by hand. And I'm gonna go, let's see here. This is the top of the cover right here. So I am going to go from left to right. So I'm gonna brush in this direction here. You don't wanna go up and down or swirl. Just go in one direction and that'll give it a really sweet finish. This is just freaking sweet. So consistent and smooth all the way around. I don't even know if I want to put that on the bike. Now, the reason why I'm leaving this cover bare and not doing any type of coating is because engine covers get a ton of wear when you're riding the bike. Obviously, the boots are rubbed against the cover with dirt and all sorts of uh, abrasive material there, scratches it up. So whether you put powder coat or Cerakote or anodizing, except for hard anodizing, all that stuff is gonna wear right off. And so with a bare cover, nothing to wear off. And when it gets scratched up, just grab a pad, give it a little uh, cleanup, and you are back to looking like this. And besides, who doesn't love the look of brushed aluminum? I think that's as clean as it gets right there. Now the next thing I'll be working on is smoothing out the scrapes on the bottom of the water pump cover. I don't want those showing through when I Cerakote it. And I'll be using the coarse wheel on the buffer to clean this up. Like always, seem to get carried away and start smoothing out every little pit and casting line. But you know what? Looks pretty good. And it's gonna look even better when it is Cerakoted. Now it's on to cleaning up the flywheel. Looking good. Now this is kind of common sense, but whenever you're doing any sort of grinding or sanding with metal, you wanna wear some gloves, a respirator, that's huge and some eye protection. So don't be stupid guys. Now for the cylinder head, I am going to replace this with an aftermarket uh, fat head cylinder head, billet one. But just for the heck of it, I'm gonna clean up the detonation on the bottom side here. It's got some pitting inside the combustion chamber and I'm just gonna turn it into a cool looking paperweight. Check out this beauty. I love just thinking around and seeing what I can do with the pads. It turned out pretty freaking sweet. Now obviously at this point, I can't use the head any longer. Ground down the dome pretty far to get rid of that detonation. I mean, I could have fixed it up with some TIG welding, but I was more so just seeing what I could do with those pads. 
So I've got a pretty cool paperweight now. Now the last thing I'll be shining up is the flywheel cover. This is the original one off the bike. I noticed that had a crack along with some JB Weld repair. So I won't be using that one, but I found a different one here that's in pretty good shape. Just scratched up and worn down. It is magnesium like the clutch cover, so it should clean up really well. So let's get after it. Man, I just can't get enough of this brush finish. I can do this stuff all day long. This one turned out really good, pretty much perfect. Got a nice, camera won't even focus on it. Come on now. Yeah, this one took about 30 minutes to do. I ended up having to bust out the rubber sanding drum to remove the lettering. I think it looks a lot cleaner without anything on there. Just a nice, clean simple look now we're going to pair up the flywheel cover with the clutch cover that's about as good as it gets right there guys man these parts look sweet for being 20 years old guys i can't stress this enough if you're going to be doing any sort of sanding or polishing on metal or sanding off paint you gotta protect yourself so first off wear a respirator with good filters on them these are p100 rated so that essentially means these trap 99.9% .9 of the particles Fumes, gases, they are a really good investment. Actually, these are only like 20 bucks. The uh, respirator itself, this one is super nice. It's got uh, eye protection, that is huge. If you wanna go something cheaper, you can just get something like that and a smaller respirator. And then definitely wear some gloves. And if you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding, wear a long sleeve or a sweatshirt and take it off before you go inside. Also, if you're hardcore about this stuff, I would recommend getting a exhaust fan or some sort of ventilation. That is huge. But guys, take it from me. I was extremely sick a couple years ago with cancer, so I definitely don't mess around when it comes to this stuff. It honestly really isn't that expensive to protect yourself. You can get a cheaper respirator, some glasses, some gloves, maybe get a setup like this one here. You can get that, the gloves, glasses for under like 40 or 50 bucks. Very wise investment. And as far as the filters go, these are around 15 or 20 bucks. And I would change them out every month or every other month, depending on how much you're sanding or painting. Like always, I will have every single thing I use throughout the video linked down below in the description. One more thing before I go, as many of you know, I am doing a giveaway with this bike, the 2002 RM250 that I'm building currently. So when it's all finished up, I'll be giving it away completely free. All you have to do to sign up is go down below in the description, hit that first link, and that is it. I wanna give a big thank you to you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I've got some big stuff on the channel coming soon. Gonna be doing some coatings, rebuilding the engine, lots of great things coming with the RM. So definitely hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, and I will see you in a video coming soon. Keep her primed.